god, guys, we gotta hurry up. I'm out of breath, but let's do this quick. This morning, it is Monday. It is warm. Actually, it is oddly warm. I have people from Ancestry DNA coming over to my house right now. The people that do Ancestry family trees. The people that look into your ancestor roots. That's the best way to put it. Where, where, where to start? Where to start? A little bit more than a year ago, I partnered with Ancestry DNA, and we did this, like, family game show thing. That was to reveal my DNA results. I had no idea what I was until then. I wasn't even sure I was human at that point. I legit thought I was a turtle until, like, 12th grade. Have you seen those photos? <laughs> they reached out probably about a month ago to say, hey, Dan, we want to know if you'd be interested in learning more about your ancestors on the family tree side of things. Yeah, let's do it. They had a researcher look into my family's ancestry. They found a story. Okay, this is all I know. This I swear to God, this is all I know. They're like, we want to come to your house and we want to have someone from Ancestry give you the story. Like, like tell you what your family did. I know nothing about my family history. I know that the following four places, if you take a little bit of dust from each place, you put it in a blender, most likely me or a variant of one of my brothers will come out. <laughs> That's how babies are born, right? Malta, Ireland, Scotland, and Iceland. They had told me they found a story. Following this event this morning, they, next week they're flying me to that destination. Again, they've told me nothing. If only you guys could see the emails. It's like, we can't tell you where, like, I know nothing. So I'm crazy excited this morning to figure it out. I think a lot of us tend to only know maybe two generations above us, which is our parents and our grandparents. It gets kind of murky because those people beyond that wouldn't really spend that much time in your life. For me, I know my parents' history. I know my grandparents' history and that's, that's it. Charlie, you ready, buddy? Charlie's currently cinnamon bunning. That's okay. That's part of his ancestry results. So you, your parents were a cinnamon bun, right? As he's showcasing here. Okay, guys, the time has come. I'm joined with Lisa from Ancestry. We're gonna go through my results. Yeah? Yeah? We're gonna look at your DNA first. Which you've already seen, right? I've already seen the okay, DNA. But we're just gonna re remind everybody. Yeah. Remind you too. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. First, 52% from England, Wales, and Northwestern Europe. Ireland and Scotland is 17%. Malta is 15 Norway, so Norway's 10%. It includes like a subset of Iceland. 4% Swedish. Which I didn't know. <laughs> Greece and the Balkans, 2%. Well, uh, we're going to focus today on some of what's in your DNA, but I'm not going to give you a huge amount of information. We're just going to explore a little bit. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go to your tree. You entered online the information that you knew. So there's you and your parents and your grandparents. And that's kind of all that you yeah. knew. Is that right? That, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we found a few things for you. So with Lorraine Francis Taylor, we're going to focus on this line. So it's your father's mother's line. Okay. So we're going to focus. Yeah, yeah. It's my um, Nana. Your Nana. So yeah. you knew her. Absolutely. She was a sweetheart. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Add father. And her father is James Dodds Taylor. Dodds? D-O-D-D-S, born in 1908. So you wanna to go to birth date? This is your great grandfather. Hmm. And now let's add your great grandmother. And her name is Frances Jackson. Jackson? Jackson. What? Yeah. Last name is Horrell, H-O-R-R-E-L-L. -L. And she was born in York. Ontario, Canada. Wow. Can I have not heard that? of any of this before. My middle name is James. Is it? Which makes you wonder if okay. James Dodds Taylor. Named after your great grandfather. See, we've just entered those and what do you see has happened? We've had these two little Extended. leaves pop up, right? Yeah. So these are hints. They're gonna give us some some insight into your family tree. Gone through all the ancestry records, 20 million records, and said, okay, we have Francis Jackson Horrell, born 1908 in York. Let's see what records we have in Ancestry that can help us find out more about her. So when this leaf pops up, that means there's more info. That means there could be more info that can lead you to the records, huh. which is where the real stories lie. We're gonna go ahead and click on Francis' profile and let's look and see what we've got. Click on hints. I'm gonna have you scroll to possibly a birth record. So here's a birth record, Francis Jackson Horrell. Click on that record. Oh my gosh, so, it's an actual Actual scan. record, yeah, so let's click on that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this brings up a digital copy. <gasps> so here you have Francis Jackson Horrell. Go through and see what you can discover on that record. Date of birth, name of father. We just found her parents. What you've just done is you've discovered two new people. Fanny and William. William Peter Horrell and... Fanny Ellen Osborne? Yep. Osborne? Osborne. No way. Yeah. <coughs> so, wow. So those these are... These are all new names. These are your great, great grandparents. So you've never heard those names before. Right? Osborne never heard that. Okay. Ever. What we want to do is we want to add this to your tree and it will automatically give you the information. Go ahead and click those two boxes and boom, there they are. Wow. Isn't that great? It's already so much more complete. If we look at Fanny Ellen Osborne. So if someone has a document yeah. 
from like a uh, family history, they can upload it to Ancestry. Absolutely. And yeah. then that'll create the leaf for any other potential people. It can, yeah. If you're willing to share your information on your family tree publicly, yeah. then it can hint to that. Yeah, we digitize Ooh. about two million records a day. Oh my god. A day. It's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. Which means that people say, oh, I've looked on Ancestry. I'm not going to find anything. Come back. You yeah, just yeah, might yeah. find something. Yeah. yeah. So we have about 20 billion records digitized. They come from archives all over the world. Mm -hmm. Let's see when they can, uh, when, if they're from somewhere else, if they're from Canada, how long have they been there? What we found here is a UK outward passenger list leaving the UK. Benny. Okay. Mary Osborne? Yeah. Oh, so that was her mom. Yeah. Wow, okay. <laughs> Mary would be your what? My third great grandmother. Correct. Wow. And how old, how old is she? Oh, that's her age too. She was 16. Yeah. Wow, and so her mom was 34. Yeah. So just the two of them? Just the two of them coming to Canada. Leaving the UK, coming to Canada. Are there any other names around Fanny that maybe yeah. you recognize? Well, is it this one? Peter Horrell? Peter Horrell. Could they have met here? Or would they have came together? I think they met on the boat. No way. Totally. Are you serious? Yeah. And like how old he is. 23. No way. You actually see where they met. Yeah, they met on the ship. This is like a Titanic story. <laughs> well, they got here though. They didn't, yeah, yeah, they didn't see. <laughs> a, better, a better ending, right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Fanny and her mother Mary were traveling from the UK in 1907. They left Liverpool <clears throat> and came to Canada and Peter Horrell is also there. He's not with them because he's not ticketed with yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's the next ticket in line. So they could have met in line they, or they something? They could have met in line. They could have met on the ship. We're not sure because um, they're not from the same place. Oh my gosh, this so, is great. Yeah, so they met on the this ship. This is great. So you know that they got married because the birth record tells you that, right? You know that they that they had a kid. Oh, this is like a movie. <laughs> and the name of the ship was the Dominion. And they're going to Quebec. Quebec. Yep, so they came from Liverpool into Quebec. So now look at this. We've got so many hints now. Fifteen hints. It's that growing. We can go and look it's at her. Growing. Okay, here they are. Oh, so there's the Toronto connection. Yeah, this is their marriage record. So let's scroll up to the top of it. And oh, see. there's the guy, Peter. Yes, Peter Williams. Look at that. Okay, and then they got married in 1907. Now, do you remember when they came over? 1907. Uh-huh. The same year. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this guy moves quick. Yeah, so they were, came over in September. November they got married? They got married in November. Two months later. Yeah. Yeah, so that it must have been, been true. Yeah, it would help a boat ride. <laughs> yeah, they must have had a lot of time to talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <She's laughs> and then Fanny deep. Ellen Osborne, but look at, notice her age. 19. What age was she on the passenger list? 16. Yeah. She was probably lying about her age because then she wouldn't need parental consent. Oh my gosh, this movie, this is a movie. This is a movie. Okay, so so she goes on the boat at 16. Yeah, with her mom. And she meets this guy and she goes, yeah, yeah, I'm 19. Just yeah. to impress him? Maybe, so? maybe he knew she was 16, but to get married without parental consent, you need to be of a certain age. Yeah. Oh my god. So perhaps either she, maybe they wrote her name wrong on the boat, or perhaps she lied. We could only just... Oh, lied. Yeah. I like okay. that. Let's go with That's that. edgy. It's a much better story. Fanny's edgy. <laughs> For Ancestry Family Trees, someone has posted a photo of them. No, are you serious? <laughs> we can see what they look like. Oh wow, is this their parents? That This is Peter Horrell. And that is Fanny Osborne. Wow. So these are the two that met on the boat. They're the ones that met on the ship. And that is your great grandmother, Frances, and then her two brothers. Someone had put this picture in their tree yeah. from their personal collection. Yeah. That they they are related to them. But if you notice, this is a very young family. Mm -hmm. Is there anything interesting about his photo that you're Well I, well his uniform? Okay. Yeah, I mean his uniform looks very Military. So he's probably in the military. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's see if we can find out more about him. So we, you're saying that, I mean, we know he's probably in the military somehow. So yeah. Let's... It's so weird to see a picture like this because you yeah. see them at like, like museums and stuff right. and there's such a disconnect yeah. between like the old style, like even her hairstyle and you're yeah. like... Or her clothes or the way they're sitting or they don't smile, right? It's... But if it weren't for, for her and then her, oh. I wouldn't technically exist. Oh, right. Absolutely. It's so weird to yeah. think about. Like, these oh are God. your people. This is your family. So they came from the UK? They came from the UK. They're so would they have England. an accent? Oh, of course. They'd have an oh, accent? Yes, absolutely. So somewhere down the line, the accent got lost. Yeah, the accent I... came, became Toronto. Ah, <laughs> I could have had a UK accent. That would <laughs> be so nice. Okay, so here we have Canada World War One, 
CEF personnel files, William Peter Horrell. So let's see what that is. Can, uh, CEF is Canadian Expeditionary Force, uh, World War One essentially. So 126 overseas battalion. Okay, Wait. wife. So he has his wife's name listed, and here's their address. No, yeah. I can, does this still exist? And I don't believe the actual house exists, but but the place, the street exists. Yeah. Like, is it, would it be close to, like, oh my I don't gosh. know, I don't know where that is in relation to you. Have you ever heard of it? Lisgar Avenue? Oh, I'm gonna go here. <laughs> Drive by and be like, they used oh to live gosh, there. Oh my gosh, that could be near. It could be like down the street. He was a God. teamster. December 17th, oh, it's almost his birthday. It's almost his birthday. 1885. Yeah, this is his signature. Oh, wow. Essentially signing up to be in the military yeah. before World War One. These records are really rich with content. Did he have a tattoo? Yeah. He had tattoos? Oh my God, I gotta tell my mom this. <laughs> okay. On tat both forearms. Wow. Both sides, so. Oh, that is so cool. So you know, he was kind of tough. He's five, six, huh? gray eyes. Gray eyes. This guy eyes. sounds so tough. I know, right? Brown hair. Okay, so this is, this is telling us that he is ready to fight. He was part of a yeah, 126th Overseas Battalion. So the 126th then got um, absorbed into the 109th, mm -hmm. and then that got absorbed into the 38th. So that happened a lot. They arrived in England uh, on the SS Empress of Britain, 24th of August, 1916. Yeah. So he, so he comes from the UK and ends up going back there for war. Yeah. So he has transferred 109th mm -hmm. from the 126th, like we talked about. Yeah. And then we're here at the 38th. Why would they? Why would they do that? Why would they, they just put them in different places. They needed oh, more men here, more men there. Okay, so you got transferred to it. <gasps> Is that him? No. Are you serious? He got. He killed in action. Yeah. He died there. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow, that's shocking. Actually, I don't know why that shocks me. Place in the field. He dies in the war and she becomes a widow. Yeah. Wow. With these little kids. Yeah. That's so sad. And he died June 27, 1917. What a what an impactful thing. Yeah. Killed in action. Yeah. I mean, you think about it, so many, so many people died in that war. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be the war that ended all wars, right? Mm -hmm. World War One was such a a huge moment in history. God. You think, you know what, this is, my brain automatically goes to, you think of all these like war movies you see of people just getting sort of like killed, boom, 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 boom. And to yeah. know that one of my family members was one of those. Was one of those. Oh my God. And to see the faces of the people that it impacts. Yeah. Right? Yeah, to know yeah. that the loss of their father, husband, forever will change their life. Mm -hmm. And a son. I mean, he has a mother too, right? But yeah. Does it say where he died? Like it says the field. So here's what I think we need to do. So it says field. So from some of the research that I've done, uh, the 38th Battalion, at the time of his death, they were just outside of Lens, France. So that area, I think, is where you're going to have to go to find out more. What? Seriously? Yeah, I think you need to go there and see what you can find about where he died and what No, what, what France? Going. France. Because this is where he would have... That's where he would have died. Oh my God. How's your French? So I'm going to France. Going to France. Okay, <laughs> we're going to France. <laughs> Makes you wonder what happened after that. Like what happened with his family. Yeah. That was very well done. <laughs> that was like, what an incredible experience. Wow, thank you so much You're for this. Welcome. I appreciate that. My that pleasure. was My pleasure. incredibly uh, interesting. <laughs> guys, guys, I can't handle this right now. What just happened? I've never known any of that stuff about my family. This is like a, a shot and forgot episode, but for my own personal family, you know? Like, but I'm off to France. Like, chill, look at the chills, man. I never would have thought I'd be going to France. I'm gonna bring my cousin Jeremy. All of this would apply to Jeremy as well. So I'm gonna call him and I'm gonna tell him that we're going to France, baby. Phase two, we are on our way. Well, I really wanna go see this spot. Like, they lived in Toronto. It's not super far, but their address, it says was 167 Lisgar. Let's put that in the GPS. The route is being calculated. God, my GPS sounds like she's dying. The route is being calculated. Please drive to the route shown. All right. You have reached your destination. Oh shit, where? 
167. Oh my god. Wow, so they tore it down. There was probably a bunch of homes here. They tore a chunk of them down and they rebuilt modern ones. Where he lived uh, has now been torn down and is a super modern house, which is sad because right across the street, they've, they've looked like they've maintained them from when they were. You know what's crazy is I go out drinking at the end of this street. Uh, there's a popular bar in this area. Um, wow, check it out. All the other homes in this street have maintained the same. I never knew this my entire life until today. I never knew I had any sort of ancestry that lived in Toronto like this. I'm excited to go to France. Let's do it. I'm off to Paris today. I didn't know what to expect. Is this Finley Bridge? 